Okay, let's do some fun facts about Kentucky. So, um, just recently, actually, this is a, a fascinating fact. In 1786, so Kentucky is established in 1774 with Harrodstown, and then 17, um, let's see, 74, so 1786, which is 12 years after Harrodstown, the first white settlement in Kentucky, the first white settlement in the West. So, really, you know, America is like 300 something years old, but the rest of America is only about 200, maybe 100 years. So very, very young nation, right? Very young states. Kentucky is a 15th state. 1792 is when we became a state. So actually six years before Kentucky becomes a state and 12 years after people started coming into the bluegrass is when uh, Abraham Lincoln, the grandfather of Abraham Lincoln with the same name, was murdered by Indians. And so I thought that was pretty fascinating. Actually, uh, Lincoln's entire history is fascinating because... Um, you know, I'm thinking he's like this humble man, reading in candlelight, born in a log cabin. But his family was extraordinarily rich. Um, one story that really I felt humbled me when it comes to Lincoln was Thomas Lincoln used Abraham as his slave, and so he had to pay some of his debts, and so he would just give his neighbor um, Abraham Lincoln so he could work and pay off his own debts. And so he had to be literally a slave, and some people speculate, well, maybe that direct slavery is what got him to actually be against, you know, um, slavery in general. And even though the whole debate about Abraham Lincoln in Kentucky is such, it's such stupid bullshit, because um, there's no real debate. Either you love him because he freed the slaves, or you hate him because... Uh, he freed the slaves. So it's really just a racist argument. And um, and so a good an analysis of Lincoln was a very strong arm. He used war. War is kind of an outdated instrument of policy. A lot of people had to die. The entire Western, um, you know, Americas, the entire Western uh, side of the world, the Western Hemisphere, North and South Americas, they were able to get rid of slavery without having a war except for Haiti. That's what Howard Zinn had said. And so there are other methods in order to do it, but there is something of the idea of slavery was a wrong. You just put the guns into the slaves' hands, say, let's fight this shit, and then, you know, let's be done with it. So there is something that's, like, that's magical, but that didn't happen until 1863, executive order, right, that uh, Lincoln put out. And even though he does that, which is great, he frees the slaves, but he was a fucking racist. Um, he wasn't in, in favor of integration because he felt that white people were still superior, but he just felt that it was inhumane. So, you know, everybody's human, but white people are a little bit better. And then when he tried to do his decolonization efforts in New York or so, he fills a lot of uh, free blacks up in a ship and then sends them down to Haiti. And it turns out that the guy was a shyster who just takes all the free blacks and put them on a plantation and just started working them. And so, like, his decolonization efforts were totally fucking wrong. And, um, and the assassination of his grandfather, he says it's the, um, it's the legend that is more strongly than all others imprinted on his mind and memory. So him, you know, in later years, Thomas Lincoln would re recount the story of the day his father died to his son. And so out of all the stories that he had been told about the world or about America or about anything else, the, uh, the legend or the story of his death by the Indians his uh, grandfather Abraham Lincoln and uh, Uncle Mordecai, then 14 years old, killing one of the Indians, is legend more strong than all others imprinted on my mind and memory. So let's talk about it, okay? So um, Abraham Lincoln is um, the grandfather. We're talking about this, the, the senior senior. So the Abraham Lincoln, the grandfather, he owned uh, 5,500 acres of land in the richest sections of Kentucky. So he's living on, right next to Floyd's Fork. And Floyd's Fork is named after James uh, John Floyd, who's known as uh, known for the Floyd's defeat. He was an Indian murderer, killed lots of people in George Rogers Clark, um, in uh, George Rogers Clark times, and um, and also in the Battle of Blue Licks, right? So you know he. Uh, yeah, so during a rescue attempt for survivors of a raid in today's present day Shelby County, Kentucky, James John Floyd leads 27 men there and he was ambushed by Indians. Several of his men were killed, but Floyd managed to escape barely with a couple of his men and this became known as Floyd's defeat. Then uh, you had the Battle of Blue Licks, um, which then lead George Rogers Clark to several Indian raids uh, along the Miami River. So the loss of Battle of Blue Licks and then he's with George Rogers Clark killing all these fucking Shawnee people in Ohio. 
And James, you know, he's right there with them, right? James John Floyd. So he's he's known for Floyd's defeat. He's known for this fucking Indian town or this Indian battle that really, you know, the Floyd's Fork River is named after him as well, which when it meets with the Salt River is near the location of Floyd's defeat. So Floyd's Fork is next to Floyd's defeat um, where it meets with the Salt River. So it's Floyd's Fork is where he was killed. So that's why all that was necessary. So you had uh, uh, James John Floyd, who was an Indian killer during the same time as Abraham Lincoln, the grandfather, and um, they named the Floyd's Fork right after the fucking place where Abraham Lincoln settled near Hugh Station. So Abraham Lincoln settled near Hugh Station on Floyd's Fork, began clearing land, planting corn, built a cabin. He owned at least 5,544 acres of land in the richest section of Kentucky. So right before then, 1780, Abraham Lincoln sold his land on Mill Creek and in 1781 moved his family to Kentucky, then a district of Virginia. The family settled in Jefferson County. So he's in, this is, uh, this is all Louisville. This is Jefferson County, so it's all in Louisville. It was actually 20 miles east to the site of Louisville. So not exactly downtown, but in the Louisville area, in Jefferson County, right? Jefferson County today is Louisville. So... Um, and this all came about because I had read that he was from Hardin County, and actually Lincoln is, you know, in Hardin County, I just, you know, there's just so many bad things about Hardin County. I found it a shock. It was like, wow, how can you, you know, um, something good comes out of Hardin County? That's that's surprising. And so I actually looked it up, and that was what it used to be. So LaRue County is what the Hardin County used to be. So Abraham Lincoln wasn't born in Hardin County. He was born in LaRue County, but it was called Hardin County then because Hardin County was bigger. So today it's LaRue County. So that only makes me think that a part of Kentucky County, the Hardin County, because, you know, a lot of assholes in Hardin County, they actually had um, the good people who liked Lincoln, who wasn't just a bunch of racist, bigoted assholes, they had formed their own county, right? Oh, we're not going to be part of Hardin County. We're going to be LaRue County because that's where Abraham Lincoln supporters actually, you know, we're different than you guys. Uh, LaRue County is different than a Hardin County. And, um... And then I want to mention that the this this Indian you know murder that happened on, in Kentucky, Illinois wants to say land of Lincoln, and everybody wants to say how great he was. And so you know the Civil War is one of those one of the three good wars: World War II, Revolutionary War, and Civil War. So those are like the three good wars you can never touch. Um, but I mean the suspension of habeas corpus, the bloodshed and slaughter, and then the you know the lack of commitment. In 1877, they ordered all the troops back. And he was also accommodating for Kentucky for a long ass time. Maybe if he would have just smashed slavery right out, then the Confederates wouldn't have been governing Kentucky for as long as they have. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> one day in May 1786, Abraham Lincoln was working in his field with his three sons when he was shot from the nearby forest and he fell to the ground. So this is grandfather 18, uh, 1786, right? Twelve years after Harrodstown. Um, but six years before Kentucky becomes the, uh, an American state. The eldest boy, Mordecai, ran to the cabin where a loaded gun was kept, where the middle son, Josiah, ran to Hughes' station for help. Thomas, the youngest, stood in shock by his father. From the cabin, Mordecai observed an Indian come out of the forest and stop by his father's body. The Indian reached for Thomas either to kill him or carry him off. Mordecai took careful aim and shot the Indian in the chest killing him. So that that's a that's amazing fucking story. Amazing fucking story. Thomas um, Lincoln, you know, gets shot just out in the field it sounds like by a nearby forest and then the oldest boy gets a gun, the middle son runs a huge station and then Thomas who is um, Lincoln's father who's just like five, he's just in shock and he just stands by his father and then Mordecai saw the Indian come out of the forest and stop by the father's body and he reached to get Thomas to either kill him or carry him off, and then Morde uh, Mordecai took the shotgun and, uh, and and shot him in the chest and, and murdered him. Or it didn't say shotgun; it just says gun. So I'm not sure what kind of gun he actually had. It said he took careful aim. So tradition states that Captain Abraham Lincoln was buried by his cabin, which is now the site of Long Run Baptist Church and Cemetery near Eastwood, Kentucky. A stone memorializing Captain Abraham Lincoln was placed in the cemetery in 1937. Bathsheba, Bathsheba, 
Lincoln was left a widow with five underage children. She moved the family away from the Ohio River to Washington County, Kentucky, where the country was more thickly settled and there was less danger of an Indian attack under the law than operating Mordecai Lincoln as the eldest son inherited two-thirds of his father's estate when he reached the age of 21 with Bathsheba receiving one-third. The other children inherited nothing. So Mordecai gets all the fucking money, right? It's actually Mordecai could have just killed a fucking Indian, killed his father, said, hey, this is my fucking land. And he was the only one, so only the eldest son was the one who had inherited. So I guess that's what the law was back then. The wife only gets one-third of the land, and the eldest son got two-thirds of the land, and the other kids got nothing. So there's five kids total, three sons who was there at his, son's, you know, at his father's death, and, um, and nobody else gets any fucking land. So these land deals, you know, like you have, um, you got Abraham Lincoln, who's a colonel, Revolutionary War, gets this large piece of fucking chunk of ground over in Kentucky, 5,500 acres. I mean, Jesus Christ, you could just fucking sell, you know, like 100 acres off to like just settlements and shit. You don't have to do nothing but 5,500 acres. You can have cattle. You can raise so many different crops. You can do so much shit with 5,500 acres. So is, is Lincoln poor? Well, he kind of comes from rich uh, peoples, but he's not rich himself. 5,500 acres when he was a slave to Thomas. So this is, uh, this is his grandfather. And then Thomas didn't uh, inherit it, the 5,500 acres. Mordecai in, was able to uh, inherit it. So um, Josiah and, um, and Thomas Lincoln didn't get a fucking, you know, a piece of dirt for anything. So, um, life was hard, especially for Thomas, the youngest, who got little schooling and he was forced to go to work at a young age. So, he's being, you know, kind of being a slave himself. In later years, Thomas Lincoln would recount the story the day his father died to his son, Abraham Lincoln. And then Lincoln says that's the story that left the greatest impression on his mind. Um, Abraham Lincoln, uh, I had, this going to be fun facts because there's like a whole ton of things. Um, a happy birthday was first sang in Kentucky. Mother's Day was first proposed in Kentucky. Um, supposedly we got the first cheeseburger in Louisville, but there's some debate with that. We got the first radio, first radio invented in Kentucky, and that's actually um, Nathan Stubblefield. And you have, uh, who is the genius, the um, Tesla, Nikola Tesla. He says, when we start studying non-physical phenomena as much as we study physical phenomena, you'll see that science will just fucking advance hundreds of years, you know, uh, beyond where we're at right now. So two facts real fast about Abraham Lincoln, since that impression of his grandfather was being killed and then Thomas was just a kid and he was almost going to get, you know, kidnapped and then his fucking um, older brother saved his life. The, um, <clears throat> I can see how, you know, I don't know, living in the wilderness there probably was a fear of Indian attack, but there was asymmetrical warfare, so it was one-sided. So it would only seem like the Native Americans would attack you if you were in their property or their land, in general. And and um, because what I mean, what would be the incentive for them to go against a superior force? What would be the incentive just to be you know just like a suicide pact, just keep on sending people in there to die? That's that's insane. I don't believe that. So what I uh, what I do think is that um, you know who knows what uh, Thomas Lincoln and shit. But in general, the general Indian policy was there was anti-Indian. Um, just because, you know, uh, they, they had been so, well, they're racist, right? Um, but I mean, just when he had that, you know, that his father, he thinks of his grandfather as a victim when he was actually on Indian land. This was all Shawnee and Cherokee land. So his father gets murdered by a Shawnee Indian, I think. And, um, and we're supposed to, you know, feel bad about that. How dare the Indians do that? So later on, we're going to see not only does he not, you know, he's not for black people totally. He's for, you know, he's for recolonization in Haiti. Um, but he's also not for Native Americans, like at all. There's the, the mass, the largest mass execution, um, I guess, uh, official mass execution. So there's, you know, uh, people who just go out in the streets and just start shooting people. But then you also got... Um, Abraham Lincoln, uh, 38 Santi Sioux Indian men in Mancota, Minnesota, December 16, 1862, were hung. So the large 38 men, 38 Sioux Indians in Minnesota um, were hung. And they were actually trying to get 303 Indian males were set to be hanged. So they were trying to basically kill out like an entire fucking family of people. Um, authorities in Minnesota asked Lincoln to order the immediate execution of all 303 Indian males found guilty. Lincoln was concerned with how this would play with the Europeans, whom he was afraid were about to enter the war on the side of the South. 
So why why would Europeans, you know, why would he be worried about Europeans siding um, with the South if he was like, you know, if slavery was the only reason? He offered the following compromise to politicians in Minnesota. They would pair the list to those to be hung down to 39. In return, Lincoln promised to kill or remove every Indian from the state and provide Minnesota with $2 million in federal funds. And he only owed the Sioux $1.4 million for the land. So he's actually paying more money to the state of Minnesota than he did for um, the Native Americans who he was going to, you know, the great emancipator, right? And, um, and then the next thing when it comes to the Indian policy was the Homestead Act of 1862. This was where they had to just uh, file a little fucking form, and it was passed in um, 1862, so during Lincoln's tenure and for 140 acres of land out west. All you had to do is fill out an application and then five years, take care of it, and then it was yours. So he's passing out free Indian lands. It's Abraham Lincoln.